Hi, this is Dee Kaler. Welcome to Alumni Zoom Trips, a series of pre-recorded interviews with USD alumni experts about how to navigate the long-term impact of COVID-19 on our communities and workplaces. The program is co-hosted with the Office of Alumni Relations. Today, I have the pleasure of hosting Marquia Brox Chester. Marquia is a Bay Area native. After graduating from USD's Business Administration program, she began her career at Adobe, where she now serves as Business Operations Program Manager for the Employee Experience Unit. While working for Adobe, she's able to not only drive key business initiatives, but also help Adobe create a more inclusive workplace. Marquia, it's wonderful having you here with us this morning. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to kind of be back at USD, even if it's virtually. Fantastic. So I'll just start off with what do you like most about working at Adobe? Yeah, this question is probably one of my favorites because there's a long laundry list of things that I've enjoyed my during my time here. And it's cliche to say, but I always say to people, I've made some of the, my best friends working at Adobe. I have experienced various different relationships from mentors to um, people who are just there to stand by me to help me develop my career. And they've really made this entire experience working at Adobe for the past four years unique in itself because it's so important to have that, that strong group of coworkers and peers, given that a lot of time is spent at your job. So having the people, having their smiles, having the genuine nature of the culture is really what's made me so excited to continue working here for four, five, 10 more years to come. Mm -hmm. And do you um, continue to sort of feel that sense of closeness in this virtual um, remote work climate as well? Yeah, so the, there's multiple teams that have been doing various different things to keep that what we call in-person culture going and alive. So we've had virtual happy hours, we've had virtual kind of panel discussions, we've had virtual team events where we've done scavenger houses, scavenger hunts within our houses. So we have kept everything to the best that we can as connected as possible, given that in-person feeling is so important to not only just Adobe, but working in general. Um, so that has been something that I've enjoyed a lot. And I've also been able to kind of curate some of those experiences for employees and various different employee networks, which has also been great. Thanks so much for sharing that. So how did you get started in your career? So I started off and I, so I, I joined Adobe right out after graduating from USD. And I will give a big shout out to the career services team because they actually kind of are the reason why I was able to jump into tech right out of college. And they had, they, created Torero Treks, which brought students up to Silicon Valley, where I was able to experience the various different companies around and meet other people and network. And then they also had Adobe on campus doing in-person interviews. So that was my kind of foot in the door to have the opportunity to even get the chance to work at Adobe. And I started off within the HR field as an HR generalist, which is kind of the, you know, the entry level where you're learning everything about HR that you can possibly learn. And just, I was, I took that time to just absorb everything around me from the various different pieces of the function to everything about Adobe. And then that's where I started to build on skill sets and determine exactly kind of the direction I want to take my career, which has then led me to this piece of business operations as a program manager still within the employee experience or what we call HR and typically into that space. So Adobe has been phenomenal in my development and providing me the opportunities to con constantly grow and learn as I go, which I've been so grateful for. Um, thanks for that information. And who do you have to be to be successful at Adobe? What are some key skills? Yeah, this, and I think this probably goes to many different industries, but I'll speak to Adobe specifically, given this is where 
I work, but you really have to be driven. And I know that that might seem like a given, but when I say developing your career here is a lot of times back on the employee, and that's for a reason, because they want the employees to be passionate about the next step in the direction of their career and be um, excited for that and be looking forward to it. So a lot of that is driven by the employees. So in order to be successful and kind of continue to grow, you have to be seeking that new opportunity and seeking areas to continue to learn because as working within the tech industry, things are constantly changing and you have to constantly be keeping up to date within technology and learning about various different tools or whatever that is. So being hungry to learn and, and realize that you don't know everything is also a big thing because with the many changes, there will be something you don't know. Um, but being willing to learn about it and come in excited about it is something that I think is very important for you to be able to succeed at Adobe. Um, that's very helpful to know, um, just to be proactively seeking those growth opportunities, right, um, and really being self-driven and, and passionate. Given your experience, both in HR as well as business operations now, can you speak a little bit into the key skills required for each of those um, career tracks? Yeah, so when I look up when I think about my kind of entry into HR and I'll be, and this will be another shout out to the career services because I actually was able to get an internship prior to working at Adobe with Victoria's Secret at the time. And that I got through the career services team's kind of web portal. And I had that internship, which then ultimately translated into my ability to step into the Adobe role kind of well-informed. And the skill sets that you have to know is you kind of have to understand cross-functional kind of like communication. So working across various different teams, you have to have a sense of kind of um, understanding in regards to handle how to handle various different escalations, how to communicate effectively with various different stakeholders, because you might have a group you're working with um, in finance, and then you might have a group you're working with in sales, and they communicate differently. So being able to pivot and adjust that communication style to fit the needs of your customer, in a sense, has been very, very important. And that ultimately translated into my role today where I'm working cross-functionally looking at kind of what is the strategy for our organization and it and I support kind of a subset within employee experience but looking across the various different teams to make those connections to make to connect the dots is what we often call it and just say what is our strategy how do we want to work well with each other how do we want to bridge these gaps and ultimately how do we want to drive towards the important business decisions that we need to make. So being able to kind of have that holistic view and look across and see what, what, what is the need, what is the problem I'm trying to solve, and then what is the solution that we can offer as opposed to here's a solution, I don't know what the problem is, but I'm just gonna throw out possible solutions. So that's something that I've had to learn over time is just understanding how to navigate this kind of space, the fast, fast moving kind of HR policies and, and thoughts and just taking all of those experiences to wrap them into what my ultimately my current role is today. Um, thanks for that. And thanks also for the shout out to the Career Development Center. Yes, big, um, big advocate. <laughs> Now, going back to what you said about, you know, working across different teams and being able to pivot and also based on your experience, having worked on, you know, having done different functions across Adobe, is the company um, supportive of rotating and these types of lateral movements? And are you able to find the mentorship and the, and the support that you need if, you know, through your career, you explored these different opportunities and decided to pursue different tracks within the same company. Yeah, a hundred percent. I am actually kind of a proponent of that. So it, it goes back to what I mentioned in regards to driving like employees having to drive and own that career development path, because ultimately, you know, your manager can inform you of what 
is out there, but it's you that has to make the decision to say, this is the direction I want to go, or this is where I want to start helping out on projects. And that's exactly what I was able to do. I, I thought about the things that I really, really liked and some of the things that I didn't like. And I said, well, how can I get more of what I do like? And my managers, the all of the managers I've had during my time at Adobe have been so supportive of this. And it's a lot of times I just go make connections with various different people, different teams. And then I say, they need help on this project. I'm interested in helping out. Are you supportive of this? And they're like, 100% yes. So as long as the employee is able to kind of drive that and not expect the manager to kind of come up with everything, I found that my managers have always been supportive. Um, I actually took a separate class. I did kind of a boot camp data analytics course that I'm wrapping up soon. And my manager was 100% supportive of that. During the time I was taking the class, I was able to work with another team kind of on a part-time basis. And that, and my manager has been thumbs up to that just because she has, she sees that I want to continue to grow and learn and she encourages it. So that is pretty common across Adobe. It's actually very much encouraged and as well as the lateral movement, moving internally. And that's what I did when I moved from my first team to my second team. It was technically internal movement and I had the full support, you know, go through the process, jobs are posted internally. You can connect with the managers if you want, have coffee chats, and everyone is always just so open to understanding, well, what direction do you want to go? And ultimately, how can they help you get there? And I have found mentors and buddies from groups that I've joined outside of just my team at Adobe. So we have various different clubs and employee network groups that are also there to support. And you, you make connections with people who you may or may not technically be talking to in general. So that's been amazing as well. And all of these together have kind of just lended me plenty opportunities to just continue to grow. Thanks so much for that. And I know you're hiring actively. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how the COVID-19 has affected Adobe and the different opportunities currently available? Yeah, so just like pretty much everyone else in March, we were sent home to work and we will be working from home for the near future. And since then, I will, I will give a kudos to Adobe because they have been phenomenal in ensuring employees have the support they need in regards to taking additional time off, flexible schedules. And it has been amazing thus far from that, from that perspective. Um, and we are hiring again now. So we did have a hiring freeze as we're figuring things out. But They've reopened hiring, which is really exciting. Um, there's various different roles available. I haven't looked at kind of what's open, but I know a lot of teams were like, we're hiring again, perfect. I need some amazing talent to come join my team. So all of those are posted on our career page, but I think that it's an amazing place to work. Um, and how they've handled COVID or this situation and putting the employees first has been amazing in my eyes and something I really, truly appreciate. Um, and what would your top advice be to our um, graduates and alumni, um, more seasoned alumni in career transition who are interested in work opportunities with Adobe? Yeah, I would say to go out there and if there's individuals that are in your network, if there's individuals that you may see they have a position at Adobe, don't be afraid to reach out to them and just ask them to either take 10 minutes to chat with you and just talk about their careers at Adobe because you never know how that door will open. Um, you can also, of course, apply to the positions, but sometimes having that person to connect with and to hear their advice from and they could possibly refer you to someone else to connect with is a great way to build the network of individuals within a company that you want to work for. So that would be my advice. And I always, this is kind of my mantra, but it's like, never be afraid to ask because all they can do is possibly say no, which is the same answer if you didn't ask. So you, like, you never know who you're going to meet or who, what that one reach out will do um, and where it can get you, whether it's to Adobe or somewhere else. Um, I think that there is always opportunity to build that network. So that's what would be my advice is to not be afraid to seek 
kind of either advice from someone or an opportunity to connect um, it, because it, it really can make a huge difference and you'd be surprised kind of what that could do for your career. And do you still read cover letters? I, well, I don't hire at all. So I wouldn't even know. I, I, when I wrote, when I was, I'll speak from the experience of when I applied to my internal positions, I didn't include a cover letter. Um, I just updated my resume, but um, so I, I'm not sure from a recruiting perspective, if that's the make or break, but I would say from a resume perspective, definitely ensure that whatever you're submitting within that resume, resume is very clear and crisp and also ties to the role that you're applying to, just to make sure that um, it is seen as a little bit more of an easy fit in as opposed to kind of like out of the ballpark. Sure. And what would your advice be uh, for those preparing for a job interview with Adobe? Sort of going back to your first interview with them. Yeah. Oh man, good time. <laughs> um, the advice I would always have is to honestly just be yourself. We're not looking for kind of a robot or someone who is going to have all the perfect answers. And I'll speak for myself. I did not have all the perfect answers when I was interviewing, but I was genuine and they could see my passion. They can see that I was willing to do the job. They could see that I was looking forward to the growth. I was looking forward to the opportunity. And that stuck out more than me coming in with a picture perfect resume and picture perfect answers. So focusing on being who you are is who they really want to see because ultimately that's who's going to show up to work every single day. So remembering that as you go into the interview, um, because ultimately that is what I think makes candidates stand out. Mm -hmm. So it's really showing your potential, showing your willingness and your passion to be part of their team. Yes. And um, what does a typical day on the job look like for you and before and after COVID? Yeah, well, man, seems like COVID was <laughs> four of us so long ago, it almost seems like. Um, but a typical day is, I would say before COVID, I, like I mentioned, I'm pretty heavily involved within our employee network. So we would have various different events on site where we bring either groups from other companies in or we just have events amongst ourselves um you know team activities if we have strategy meetings meetings in the office going into conference rooms working on projects brainstorming sessions whiteboard sessions that would kind of be a typical day in the office a commute which i don't necessarily miss uh, but then now i would say that those things haven't necessarily stopped. They just adjusted. So, well, the commute has stopped, which I'm actually pretty grateful for, but it's just kind of like the way we work has adjusted. So although we have, and we're still having meetings, but it's like, what is the purpose of that meeting? It's, it's, it has to be a little bit more intentional because I can't just drop by someone's desk. So it has to be very much like, I need 15 minutes of your time to talk about X, Y, and Z, as opposed to just popping up and kind of seeing like, oh, how's it going? Which I would say I kind of miss a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's, it's kind of, it's kept business as usual, to be completely honest, with meetings, with um, kind of like various different virtual, we just turned our events virtual. So it's, it's amazing how we were able to pivot so easily, um, to be honest, but I would say that it's kind of just been business as usual. Do you think people will seek out some fle flexible work options after this? Now yeah. that you know, yeah, now that they've gotten yeah. used to this this the style of of working as productively virtually, um, if not even more. Right. Yeah. There and there's a whole team at Adobe who's doing research on this, and they've been connecting with employees and looking across industries and and really trying to make a decision based on the data to one ensure that it's going to work because we can make assumptions to say everyone wants to work from home but then the data might say that's actually not the case for adobe employees um, but they are looking into this and they and they recognize that their the future of work will not be kind of what we imagined it going to be when we were back in february like that has changed the dynamic has changed responsibilities have changed all of that has changed so um, there is no decision yet on what, where Adobe will kind of land with that, but I, we already had the flexible work schedules prior to COVID, or there were opportunities for flexible work schedules. So um, 
that probably will stay. I think it just comes to what else will that look like and what does that entail and who would be getting those. That's still to be determined. Sure. Um, and can you tell us about Adobe's efforts in the DNI space and your contributions specifically? I know you've been very proactive in that area and I'd love to. Yeah. Hear you. Yeah. And I will say that when I, I knew I've been singing Adobe's praises this entire time, but I, I sing them in excitement because Adobe has really taken a stance to support groups that are like the people of color, specifically the black employees at Adobe. And they've really taken the time to hear our voices and hear what we're looking for and what we need from a company that we work for, which I think has been a phenomenal experience for myself as someone being involved in those conversations to have a company wanting to know how they can best support you and make this a great place to work for you just as well as for any other employee that is at Adobe. And um, we've had various different summits and there will be more information on that. I believe they'll be posting kind of about our Adobe for All summit, which was fantastic. It was a week long full of guest speakers. And I think they've posted tidbits of that, but it, it's amazing to know that leadership is standing behind us genuinely and this is not something that's kind of gonna fly by like there's plans in place from year long or years to come not just for a few months which i greatly appreciate and also my involvement as a site lead for the black employee network in our san francisco office i've been able to be in those conversations and i've been able to speak kind of on behalf of the network and hear their voices and that also has been very empowering for me as someone you know, four years out of university being able to drive this change at such a global, large company. And I am just grateful for the leadership as well as excited about where we're going with everything around us. That's absolutely fantastic to hear. Um, thanks, for, thanks for imparting that, uh, Marquia. And then to end with, what is one thing that only happens in Adobe? Oh, man. Um, and you know, I don't know if it only happens at Adobe, but we really do love it. It's called shutdown. So within the U.S., every year we get um, we get two we get the week of Fourth of July off the entire week. All in all, U.S. employees specifically, or America's employees specifically. And then we also get about one to two weeks off every year for Christmas. And this is all in, like all the employees. And there, so there isn't that feeling that you're taking PTO and you're missing an email, like literally everyone's off. And I, I don't know if Adobe's the only one that does that, but from what I've heard, we are like one of the few. So I would say that that would probably be one of the best perks of working at Adobe. I love it. And here it is, you know, computer software company, and you can have like a shutdown, a complete yep. shutdown for at least a couple of weeks. That's fabulous. Yep. Marikia, thank you so much for today's conversation. It's been absolutely delightful chatting with you. Um, so thanks so much for your time and thank for sharing you. your advice with Toreros. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Okay. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Bye.